In this video, I'm going to review some of the new capabilities available in the Tracer export add-in for Revit. Uh, Tracer is a toolkit for helping users extract their model data from the Revit environment into an open and relational uh, database file. Uh, the Tracer export add-in can be found under the Proving Ground tab in Revit when you have Tracer installed. Uh, you'll find that Depending on your license, you'll have either a Tracer 3D or a Tracer 2D um, option available here, but the, the interface is uh, generally the same uh, uh, with the exception of a, a few features. So when you have a model open, you can go to the Tracer uh, command and activate it, and you'll be presented with this new interface uh, that allows users to set different export presets. Um, these presets allow you to save different configurations if you're only interested in certain uh, data types or element categories. Um, this allows you to save those um, and you know, be more selective about your data. The previous add-in that we had just exported everything, but this allows for a much leaner workflow uh, with the data in your model. Uh, so starting at the top of the form, you'll see that we have a few export presets. You're able to create and define your own presets if you want. Um, when you first open the add-in, you'll see that everything is selected. So when you're in everything mode, um, all element categories and geometry options available will be uh, processed in the next one. Um, on the drop-down, you can see that we have a couple of other presets that are just kind of baked into the tool. Um, so if you wanted to just do like rooms, areas, and spaces, or kind of a set of shell and structure elements, uh, those are there uh, as examples. But we're going to find that I think most users are going to want to define their own uh, new preset and, um, and save it. Um, under geometry options, um, you can see that there's some checkboxes here for um, exporting the 2D location geometry. Um, this is the information that Power BI uh, can use to render, say, area plans and, and things like that in, 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 in that interface with our visual files. Uh, we also have an export 3D option here. Um, if you're licensed for the 3D tool, um, this will let you export the three-dimensional mesh data of the objects. And you'll also see that there's some um, options here for compression. Um, we've introduced this ability uh, because 3D meshes can be high volume data. Um, there are some options here to consider. Um, when you have no compression, um, this will be faster, um, but may result in uh, larger file sizes. Um, and uh, then we have a kind of a medium compression. What that's going to do is identify high polygon meshes and compress them only uh, and keep everything else uncompressed. And then a full compression uh, will try to compress all meshes, um, which will help save uh, database uh, size um, down the road. But I should note that full compression and even medium compression are significantly slower than running fast compression. Um, the compression of meshes also has impact on the Power BI side as well. Um, ideally, you want reasonably sized uh, mesh, meshes uh, inside of the, the database fields, because um, we found that Power BI does have a, a limit to how much data can be stored in a single field, or at least a, a, a limit to how much Power BI will read out of a single field. So if you're finding that some meshes aren't showing up properly, uh, you may need to do some compression there. Um, I think the most significant part of this interface is under the Revit category section. The Revit category section allows you to um, select specific categories from the model to export. So as I indicated before, right now everything is selected, but let's say you wanted to do, do a few key um, categories um, and you didn't want everything in the model. So what you might do here is say, I'm going to select none. Um, and maybe uh, to get an idea of how much uh, of a certain element type are in the model, you may want to click on count um, to sort by the number of elements. This will actually show you that, hey, in this model, there happens to be more curtain wall mullions than any other element. Um, you can start to get an indication of, of where the data volume in the model is. So there's your you know, walls, 211 elements, you know, curtain wall grids, 363. Um, and you, know, you can kind of scroll through here. Um, if you want to search for something specific, let's say I just want to get my rooms, um, you can type in rooms and it'll filter the list. You can see we have 91 rooms available. Um, and once you have those selections made, you can go to um, export. And when you go to export, it's going to just open up the save dialog and allow you to save 
um, that exported uh, database file. And what you'll see is that um, we're in the uh, sam uh, basically the samples folder here. It's going to find the directory that your Revit model is in and allow you to um, do an export here. So what I might do is just navigate to my desktop. And when I navigate to my desktop, um, you'll see that I already have a kind of a version of this saved app. But maybe what I'll do here is, is uh, just do an extension here and say rooms only, for example. And then I'm just going to hit save. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through that process of, of exporting. It's going to be pretty quick uh, with this export because there's not a whole lot of data. Um, I'm just exporting the room geometry. And uh, it'll open up the folder that uh, contains uh, that particular database export. Um, so, and for those of you who aren't familiar, what this uh, database export is going to do is it's going to produce what's called an SQL light file. Um, an SQL light file is a standalone relational database. Um, this is a free database browser uh, for SQL light files. So, if you're ever interested in like getting into the specific data contained within these files, you can use this utility. It's a free and, and an open utility. I'm just going to go ahead and click Open Database. I'm going to navigate to my desktop where I had my rooms file saved. And you can see that I've got my rooms only DB here. And I'm going to click open. And you can see now we have uh, a listing of the available tables um, and views um, in this relational uh, database file. And this uh, you know, utility just lets you kind of understand what's in there. So if I right click on the element table, for example, and click browse table, um, it's going to show me what the contents of that table. I can see that we only have our rooms elements. Um, those have been exported. Um, and what you'll see is that you can get to the, you know, the Revit ID, that's the element ID in Revit, it's kind of unique GUID. Let's see that we have the type, which is room, category, which is rooms. Um, there's the name of the element. And if I scroll over here, you can see that there's our location data. That's a two-dimensional uh, data um, that uh, Power BI can use to kind of render a diagrammatic plan. And then we also are getting the mesh information uh, since I had meshes exported and uh, those are also stored in those, those database records. Um, there's also, you know, depending on what you export, there might be a variety of different tables here. Um, the core ones here are document element and then you can access the element parameters as well. Um, there's also some conveniently created views um, so here's a view of a you know, kind of a table of room elements. I mean, if I go to browse here, I'll browse this table. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to pull up the kind of similar information that I just showed you in the elements table. You can get an element name, category. Um, there's the location and mesh information. And if I scroll over here, the view is also pulling forward uh, the parameters for uh, things that are assigned to that room and entered in that room. So here you can get like the area, the volume, uh, perimeter, um, and any parameters that are really attached to, to room objects are available in, in this view. So hopefully this was a useful overview. Um, we have a, a lot of exciting stuff uh, within the uh, Tracer uh, add-in uh, harvesting tool. Um, and you know, we're able to uh, now be selective about the data that we're exporting. We can do export presets. We can choose between 2D and 3D options uh, if you're licensed to do so. Um, and we think this is going to be far more flexible for our users to get to their Revit data and start to use it for different analysis purposes.